Hi guys, welcome back to our series of ADFS and uh, in the last video we have covered up the theoretical part that you need to know for relying party trust. In this video I'm going to showcase you the tool which I was referring to and the tool name is Claims X-Ray. So it's a tool uh, which has been recently released by Microsoft which helps you in n number of ways to learn more and more about ADFS and how exactly the claims are processed, how you can make changes on ADFS and get a different result on your application. So if you have watched the last video, what we already know is what is a relying party trust, how you can create a relying party trust, what are the different settings available on a relying party trust which can be customized. In this video, I'm going to focus about the properties of your relying party trust wherein you will be able to update some settings like custom claim rules or identifier values or different things which are more over related to your relying party. Then I will be talking about claim x-ray tool wherein I will be showing you a demo of how authentication works with different protocols. So this will be a complete demo session on the lab. So I'll switch to my VM now. And as you guys can see that uh, this is the relying party trust which we have created in our last demo. Now you can actually right click here itself and then click on properties and all the settings or all the information that you have submitted while creating the relying party trust will be listed here. And if you want to make any change likewise you want to change the identifier value or even if you want to update the federation metadata URL of your application, that can be done from here. Now, let's talk about that particular tool. And uh, The tool named is ADFS Help. So what you have to do is you have to go to a browser and go to this link called adfshelp.microsoft.com. I will be sharing this link in the description section as well, but this is the link where you have to go. Once you'll navigate to, that, to this particular link, you will see multiple options. But the one which we are referring right now is Claims X-Ray. Now you have to click on this and this is actually a website which can send an authentication request to your ADFS. That means this can act as an application and guess what? It will also show you the token and it will also show you the claims which it has received from ADFS. Now, if I go back to my ADFS console, I don't have any relying party trust for this particular application. This means what? If this application tries to contact my ADFS, I should get an error message. So this is the federation service name of my ADFS. For your ADFS, you can find it here. Right click on ADFS and then click on Edit Federation Service Properties. And this is something which you have to type here. Federation Instance. Now I'm saying that initiate a form based authentication. This means that user will be prompted to enter username and password. And use a protocol WSFed and force a fresh authentication. Now the moment I will click on test authentication, the request will be sent to my ADFS and it is showing me the error message. Now in order to check what could be the reason behind this error message, you can go to event viewer, go to ADFS and then go to this folder named as admin, go to the section named as admin in fact. And right now it's 427, I'll just refresh it. And this is the latest error message which I have received. And what does this error message say is the requested relying party trust and then the name is unspecified or unsupported. That means ADFS doesn't know anything about this particular relying party or this particular application. Now, in the previous video, I have told that in order for ADFS to make any change or in order for ADFS to process any authentication task for a particular application, there must be a relying party trust. Now this is something which is an entry point for us to create a relying party for claim x-ray. But the question comes how you will create 
a relying party trust for this application. As I said before, everything has been made so simple that you don't need any application on-prem, any infrastructure on-prem. You can use the same ADFS machine and I'll show you the easiest way to do that, which is already documented on this website. So click on this option which says Federation Service Configuration and then click on this option which says Relying Party Trust Management. I repeat it again, it's Relying Party Trust Management. Just download this script. That's all you have to do. Nothing else, no configuration that you have to manually do on ADFS console. All you have to do is you have to download this particular script and this will also create a relying party trust for you. So for that, what we'll do is we'll go to PowerShell and I will run it as admin. I've already downloaded this script. So what I'll do is I'll go to the location and then I will check for this script. And this is that particular script, which is Claim X-Ray Manager. If I go back to my browser and if I'll click on Show in Folder, this is the particular script which I have to run. Now I'll go back to my PowerShell and I'll run this script. Once this script has completed, it will give you two options. Select Operation, wherein you can say Copy Claims to X-Ray. And the second one is Select Relying Party Trust, which will let you know to choose what kind of claim is has to be issued to which relying party right now I have two. you are getting two, but I'm not going to make any change I'm trying to make it as simple as possible and the changes that we will be doing will be for claim issuance policy so I would uh, suggest you not to make any change here because this is something which we are doing for testing and which we are going to know how everything works so what we'll do is we'll simply click on apply changes that's it it's this much simple go back to your ADFS click on relying party trust and just refresh and you'll find a new relying party trust and as you can see that if I go and check the identifier value this is the same value which we were getting in the error message. The requested relying party trust you are in Microsoft ADFS claims X-ray is unspecified or unsupported. That means what? When ADFS has received a request for claims X-ray application, there was no relying party which is holding that particular value in the identifier tab. This is something which I have mentioned in the previous video as well and this is something which is really, really important. Now, when we'll try logging in again in the application, I'll show you with which parameter it comes when you use a WS Fed protocol. So I'll close this browser and I'll open a new browser and I'll again go to adfshelp.microsoft.com, online tools, claims x-ray, and here I will be typing my Federation service name I will be selecting the options of form, the same thing that we have done before, WS Fed, force, fresh authentication, and then click on test authentication. I've been redirected to my ADFS page, and now let me copy this particular redirect URL. Now, if I check this redirect URL, what you see is WT Realm contains the same value, which is saved. In the identifier tab of your relying party so this means what when ADFS is receiving a request from a particular application application is sending the identifier value in a parameter called WT realm because this is a WS fed authentication request now right now I have not created the uh, videos on specifically how WS Fed and SAML works, but I will try to create them as soon as possible. For this demo, you can think of this as the identifier value must be included in the authentication request. Now, if we go back to our browser, and now if I try signing in, enter my username and my password, I should be signed in now and see all my claims are getting listed here.
that means whichever claims have to be issued for this particular relying party are getting listed here and if you want to know which claims are issued or what is the process which ADFS is following just click on this option which says edit claim issuance policy and right now this policy says issue all the claims you can read it from here issue all claims and that's what's happening right now now this is a very important console which helps you to do a lot of customization in terms of sending a specific claim to your application now let's say this is an application which requires an attribute which is not getting listed here right now that means a custom claim and let's say that claim is department attribute now I'll tell you the ways how to proceed and how to make things work if any of your application vendors tells you that I need a custom attribute with ABC name or whatever it is the very first thing that you have to do is come to the section which is called claim description I repeat it again claim description and check if that claim is getting listed here or not in our case we have taken an example of department attribute and this is not listed here let me just verify it once again department attribute or let's say there is some random requirement of some attributes uh, which are not listed here but that will make a lot of sense to your application and let's say the attribute name is random your application vendor is saying that i need a random attribute okay so in that case if anything is not available in claim description that value will not be sent to your application but the question comes how do i fix this how do i send a claim which is not available in claim description so since our attribute which we are focusing as a department attribute which is not mentioned here what we will do is we will create a new claim description and for that what you two things are there which you have to focus is which protocol is used by application is it a WS fed or is it a exam or is it a SAML protocol now when you will read the RFCs of these protocols you'll come to know about the schema definition of claim description but for this particular demo if it is a WS fed authentication that's happening from your application try side try to choose a protocol which starts with schema.microsoft.com and what I'll do in this case is for this particular claim description which is authentication method provider I'll just copy this field called schema.microsoft.com that's actually claim type and then I'll click on cancel now I'll go to add a claim description and I'll type a name called department and again a short name claim identifier and instead of auth method providers what I'll do is I'll type department and this is a test claim description okay now if you want you can select these two options if you don't want you can leave them like this but I would suggest you select them because there is a reason behind this and that is this claim description will now get started listing in your federation metadata and your ADFS server can receive or can consume any claim named as department and can also send it to the different relying parties so right now we are defining a claim description that means we are letting the ADFS know that this is a new claim that you have to issue and it's been named as department now I'll click on OK and that's all required from claim description section I'll go back to my relying party trust and I'll go back to the relying party and then I'll click on edit claim issuance policy once I'll click on this I'll click on add a rule and since right now there is only one claim provider for ADFS and that is Active Directory what we'll do is we'll just verify that information and uh, that can be checked from here and as you can see I'm getting the option of Active Directory now 
ADFS can only query the claims from Active Directory because Active Directory is getting listed as a claim provider. So what we'll do is while selecting the options from where this information has to be queried, we'll select LDAP. That's the reason why I've shown you the claim provider trust tab. That there is only one information available over there and that is Active Directory. Now I'll click on add rule and I think I'm in the wrong window. Let's refresh it again. Claim issuance policy, add rule. And now I'm going to select send LDAP attributes as claims. I'll click on next and I'll type my claim rule. Let's say claim x-ray and department attribute. Okay. And LDAP attribute, sorry, attribute store is Active Directory because Active Directory is the only option that I'm getting in Claim Provider Trust. Now here I will select Department Attribute because Department is an attribute that exists in the user object. That means what? We are telling ADFS to query the Department Attribute of a particular user object and send it as the Department Attribute in the claim that you are sending to a particular application inside a token. That means what? ADFS will query the department attribute a value of a user object, put it in a claim description that we have associated with this particular department claim, and then the same information will be sent inside the token to this particular application. I'll click on finish, I'll click on apply, and then I'll click on OK. Now I again go back to my tool and again, I'll choose the same protocol and then I'll click on force fresh authentication so that we can actually match what is the difference between the two responses that we have received from ADFS server. So I've entered my username and password and here I'm not getting anything named as department, but let's see if I'm getting it here. And as you can see, I'm getting the department attribute. That means what? If this would have been any application that requires a custom claim, which you don't find on your ADFS or which is not listed in your ADFS claim description section. I've shown you a method how you can create one and send a custom claim to your application. This is one of the things that you can do from this particular application, but there are n number of ways of testing this application and knowing how things work in ADFS. I would request you to try n number of things or as many things as possible. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section. So this was all about uh, this particular tool. I think I've shown you enough uh, to go ahead and do a lot of testing as per your requirement. So let's talk about a quick summary for this particular video. We have checked different settings available in the relying party trust. We have also talked about claims X-ray tool by Microsoft. How to check authentication with different protocols. In the next video, I'm going to talk about claim provider trust and custom claims that can be sent with the help of claim rule language. If you have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. And if you have any query or suggestion, please feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.